Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, your boy, TPT, coming at you, not live and not from Twitch TV. Yes, I know, it is me. I am not dead. It's crazy. Trust me, just don't have a heart attack, all right? Now, today, I'm going to be doing another advanced U4 guide, and this one is going to be on culture. Now, before I do get into this, obviously, I do still have to do my quick shout-outs. First of all, to the EU4 Australia Discord and the EU4 Ust um, Casuals Discord. Sorry, it's been a little while since I've done these, so I'm a little bit of out of practice. Naturally, if you're looking for an Australian uh, Discord uh, for EU4 players, you can head on over to it. Um, pr normally Wednesdays, 6.30pm AEST. I can't remember if they change it for Daylight Savings, but around about that time. Um, or also, obviously, if you're European or American looking for one, you can head on over to EU4 Casuals. As long as you stay away from the politics channel, you should be just fine. So, culture. Culture's always been a pretty important part of EU4. Not necessarily in the direct game impact outside of the formable tags you get from being certain cultures, like, for example, Germany, Spain, um, you know, the PLC etc. Um, but um, the actual mechanics of culture have always played a very important part in the game. So if you don't know, you can look at culture by heading on over to the political map mode. You have two ones here. You've got culture and accepted culture. First one basically just shows you the different um, regions because you have uh, a culture and then you have a culture group. So the first one, say for example, we've got Polish um, and Polish is in the West Slavic culture group. Um, which also includes Silesian, Sorbian, and Czech. Now, you start off with your main accepted culture, obviously in our case that being Polish, and you can also choose to um, promote various cultures in your country at a cost of 100, politi um, 100 diplomatic points once they have at least 20 development in states in your country and this essentially means that you don't suffer the standard negative bonifiers you'd get from having a non-accepted culture in a country so if we were to say for example go over to lithuania and find one as you can see here because it's not an accepted culture it has increased wrecks uh, un increased unrest, reduced tax, missionary strength, manpower, and sailors modifiers. So, culture does actually play quite an important part, um, specifically in the military section of your provinces. Not so much the monetary, as it's only tax, you still get the full production value, um, but it is, you know, not, it's nothing to sneeze at. Um, uh, something to consider, though, uh, is that there is different penalties for culture. So, say for example, we are, so we have, you know, Ruthenia and Belarusian and Lithuanian. So, if we were to say, for example, Annex, Livonia, then the penalties we get for Latvia is is less than the penalties we would get for Ryazan, or Ryazanian. So, that's because Latvia is still in the same culture group, although we haven't promoted it. So, you do still receive some minor penalties to your manpower, sailors, and tax. However, you don't receive the same penalties you would get from a culture that is not in your culture, uh, culture group and is not promoted. Something to note, however is that when you're playing a Republic, you actually get a reduced negative modifier for those cultures. So you get, um, it's basically reduced by 10% tax, 10% manpower, 10% sailors, and 0.5 on rest. So as you can see, all those amounts are reduced by that. So you do still suffer some penalties. However, they are not as severe. Um, now, although these mo the, those modifiers only affect uh, cultures that are not in your cultural group, if it's in the same culture, it's still just the same penalty. So, you know, like if I was to, for example, take over a, you know, a Umbrian province, I would still receive the standard 15, 15, and 10, as you can see there. Now, there's a few other important things to note regarding the accepting of cultures. First of all, um, if you form an empire, you will automatically uh, embrace the cultures in your culture group. So, say for ex uh, um, so say for example, you've got one promoted culture, all right, of Polish, 
but you also have, you know, all the Czech, Czech, Czech land, all the Silesian land, and all the Sorbian land. Well, if you form an empire as Poland, so if you reach the empire rank, um, then that means that you will automatically accept these three cultures without it taking up a promote culture slot. So the larger your culture group is initially in particular, the less that you really need to look at promoting those cultures uh, and the less you need to look at converting them. When you're converting a culture, it takes approximately, I believe it should be um, 100, oh, sorry, 10 months per uh, development and also 10 diplomatic power per development, maxing out at 30. So if I was to say, for example, convert this province, um, if it wasn't Polish, it would take 170 months and it would cost 170 development. Um, so they, it is quite expensive, which is typically why people don't tend to do it because 170 Diplo points is like three to four um, production, base production. So uh, generally speaking, people don't really do it with one notable exception, that being shifting cultures. So if we look here as our Ruthenian, um, we've got right here this little button that says cultural shift. So if we have 50% of our development in our states is Ruthenian, we can actually shift over to Ruthenian culture. Now, you may be asking, why the hell would you want to do that? Which is a very fair question. The reason is that those, uh, because of the fact of those cultural tags that I mentioned earlier. Say, for example, I'm playing as Poland, all right? If I wanted to form Germany, I could. What I would have to do is I would have to uh, annex basically a bunch of this German Germanic land and then cultural flip over to German and then I would actually have the option provided that I f obviously fulfill the other requirements of forming Germany so it's a it's a good way of getting strong end game ideas uh, even if you start off as a country without that option. Now, again, obviously, it is very expensive, uh, and it is a very time-consuming pro process. Um, a lot of people will simply, instead of cultural converting, they will actually just unstate provinces in order to increase the pr proportional representation of those cultural groups in their country. However, um, obviously, you can also spend the diplomatic points to do it. Something else to consider is that in the age of absolutism, uh, if you have five promoted cultures, that is also an age bonus. And as it's age of absolutism, it is actually a pretty important age for getting those age bonuses. So I would recommend at least trying to have about five reasonable sized cultures in your country um, in order to promote them. Uh, you get you get more accepted cultures through a combination of ideas. Uh, I believe there are some countries that do get it in their national ideas. Um, so, obviously, if you go to humanist, we have right here maximum rated cultures plus two. Uh, and on top of that, you also get it in technologies as well. So, there is a few different options. So typically, you'll normally have around four to six accepted cultures by the time Age of Absolutism comes around. Uh, and obviously it's a pretty nice handy thing to have. Um, and lastly, of course, you can also get it through trading in silk, as well as I think there's also some monuments that now have it. And lastly, you also can get it through the government reform should be in one of these. There it is, decentralized bureaucracy, maximum road culture plus two. So that's one of the reasons why I'd always suggest going for this one over this minor autonomy change, since you're probably going to be taking economic ideas anyway. If you've watched my multi, if you watch my single or multiplayer idea groups videos, wink, wink, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> um, so, um. I don't really think there's uh, anything else to cover in this video. Um, I will I will also have a special mention for the lost cultures. Um, there is a couple of them um, that now they are quite a 
common site if you've ever formed the Roman Empire, um, as Roman culture is the only lost culture that you can get spawned naturally in the game without creating as a custom nation. Um, or during the invasion, uh, if you know John Mayan, if you guys haven't heard of that, I was just giving it a check out. Um, but yeah, so that's the only lost culture you can get. However, naturally, um, uh, fin completing a one culture with the Roman culture does attribute itself a certain level of prestige. Anyway, okay, that's all I wanted to cover now. Sorry, I just kind of forgot about it. I just wanted to have like a little special mention for it. Um, and, oh, oh, right, of course, I, I nearly forgot. Um, if Most cultures will have a primary nation. So, say, for example, the uh, the Turkish primary nation is Ottomans. Uh, and that just means that you will not you will not lose your uncontested cause on that land if you are the Ottomans. Um, another example would be you know, French, uh, France and French. Um, and if you do convert those cultures, then they will... Uh, swap to obeying the normal 50, 150 year expiry timers for those cores. Anyway, okay, that's all I wanted to cover now. I just figured it was worth a minor mention. Frankly, it doesn't really tend to matter unless you're trying to create vassals, um, in which case it can be important to note which primary cultures fit with which primary nations. Um, but I will leave it there. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. Be sure to subscribe if you never want to see another one of my videos again because I release them pretty much once in a blue moon. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.